Hi everyone, it's Killshot from 99 Gaming. This is the Walking Dead mid-season finale reaction video or therapy or whatever we want to call it. And I brought this image back up because now, yes, everyone, doesn't this look like a bandage when you know that it's a bandage? I know a couple people did type that in chat and they were looking at it a little bit closely. But you can see the fiber on it. I know we got guesses all over the place. What an amazing episode. And let me just... You know, first of all, I appreciate all of you guys being here. I know it's a roller coaster back and forth, and it's going to be a little bit worse on February 25th when uh, the final moments of Carl actually uh, click in, and uh, we get to see a little bit more Red Eye Rick. So before the conspiracy theories start, let me say a couple things. And, and one thing is, Scott Gimple is not Robert Kirkman. Scott Gimple is is very um, he he skates around a couple things, but he is true to his word. Um, Carl is dying, and we need to come to terms with that. It's not that he's immune to it. Um, he's pretty clear it is a one-way ticket. It will play out the way Walker Bites play out. It is going to be a sad moment, um, and it's going to be something we're going to have to process for the next couple months. But Carl is not done, so he's done, but there's some other things that are going to go down. So I, I know, you know there's going to be different theories out there. When did it happen? Why did it happen? Could he live through it? He's done. So let's just, and, and this also brings a little bit of, um, you know, to a lot of people who, I, I ran into this maybe a year ago when we would do theories and predictions and people would say, well, nope, that's not going to happen because it's like that in the comics. And you can definitely see AMC is moving off in a different direction. Uh, they're creating their own storyline. There still will, will be bits and pieces of it. But it, this is a um, as bad as it is for Carl. Um, it is it, it's refreshing in a sense that they're willing to take that chance and go in a different direction and just keep people um, guessing a little bit. So uh, Angela McMillan, thank you for that. Um, you guys uh, know how these videos work. Uh, we're going to talk about some different stuff. These are very raw reaction videos. Angela, you got to give me a question. Um, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, if you have something to add to it or a question or a comment, it would greatly be appreciated. Um, the next couple nights, we're going to do three or four of these different, um, I guess, reaction videos or what we think, how it's going to play out, all of the above. It's, um, it's a lot to process at one time because so many things happen that I wanted to talk about. And, and I think that's why, A, this is shocking, and this definitely uh, constitutes what they talked about. But there's a whole lot of other stuff that was going on as well. I'm going to get back to some notes, notes that I took and I want to talk about, but I'm going to read a couple of your comments as well. Join us uh, tomorrow night, uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and then we probably will not do the uh, Sunday spoilers, uh, at least for a little while, but uh, we'll definitely pick up uh, another segment on Sunday afternoon. Um, yeah, you've got, there's Angela McMillan. Okay, we got a follow-up comment. So I think Carl asked his dad in the letter to kill Negan. That's why Rick repeats, mercy over my wrath. Carl writes him, quoting Sadiq. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure. Um, I would, I'm going to go back and look through some of the different episodes because I know some people were talking tonight and Scott Gimple almost debunked that a little bit because they said, did, um, Carl, you know, when Carl fell on top of the walkers, he, um, that, I think, what is what a lot of people thought when he was out helping Sadiq, and he got bit there. But I'm going to go back and check the um, episode number one, I feel like, is when he might have gotten bit. And, and I probably missed a little bit of that. And the only reason I bring that up is because they showed Rick and Carl walking along, and that's where Carl really started to talk about... Um, ending it and getting along and building alliances and Rick even looks at him and, and says what do you think that we're going to be picking strawberries with Negan so when Carl was walking along that I think he was already bitten at that point and and he's already processing and laying out how he's going to make his exit and that that whole stage of how that's going to go down so don't exactly quote me on that we'll talk I'll do a little bit more research and we'll go with that tomorrow I know the obvious thing was when he fell down um, and he was helping Sadiq but I think it happened prior to that um, because he just seemed to have a little bit of clarity and he was okay with um, his path at that point. So, But um, Gimple even said a little bit ago, he goes, it was pretty obvious to them that um, 
when it happened, they thought the audience might have knew about it. Um, I'm just picking up some bits and pieces. So, Westwick says, uh, I don't agree the comic is the template and you can't ignore it. Um, I, I don't know if that was a response to my comment or someone else's comment, but in in reading the the comic, it is the template and it is the universe, but um, as as a fan of the show before the comic, I'm perfectly fine with them changing the um, the narrative. But, you know, to each their own. Um, 99 Gaming says, how did you react to the bite on Carl? You know, the when it got to about six minutes to go, is you know everything's going to go down at that point. Um, it wasn't a complete shock when you saw Carl there. You could see Carl kind of, uh, he was weakening up, whether it was a bite or whether it was... Um, something had happened, and I know, you, you know, this... This whole fake video that came out a month ago really threw a damper in a lot of stuff because it had everybody's mindset in a certain direction. I'm um, I'm okay with it for the story, and here's why. Because if Negan would have killed Carl, and Carl was willing to let Negan kill him at, at that point, because you know it's like, hey, if I can negotiate myself and I'm going to die anyway, it's like it's free. Um. The fact that Negan did not kill Carl still opens up the possibility that Rick and Negan can work together in the future. And, hold on one second. Yeah, can you, don't delete that. Just just have him uh, goodbye, like forever. Yeah, that guy shouldn't even be here. I think somebody had a, a little too much to drink. You can be passionate, but you just can't come into a live stream and just be a complete idiot. That'll get you an exit really quickly. The um, I thought the scene with Rick and and Negan was good. I I wish Rick would have gotten a couple shots off with Lucille. And and I do think they in the beginning what really got me was everybody is pinned down, and I'm thinking like. How are these people going to get out of this, right? I mean, Maggie's pinned in. The kingdom has no way out. Alexandria's completely surrounded. But then I thought, you know, they still got Dwighty. They still, they're hiding around the corner. There can be one or two things that could shift this. But um, it, there's some possibilities at work now. Um, Jerry and Michelle H., absolutely. So, um I'm going to give a shout out to Michelle for a couple reasons. One, um, Michelle, as they said, keep in mind, and this is supposed to be therapy. Where's Michelle? Michelle should be listening to this. A um, couple things. One, it's not a documentary, so Chandler's okay. That's obvious, right? Number two, it's sometimes these deaths actually have meaning. And I think when you look at kind of the the bigger picture of what Carl's death is going to mean, at some point, this war has to start stopping. It, it's not going in that direction. And the scene with Rick and Carl walking along, I think, actually started to plant that seed with Rick of, what are you going to do? You're just going to kill everybody and keep killing? Jesus did a little bit of that. Um, and and they, the show is so good at, at ramping up some people's behaviors and then toning down other people's behaviors. So I like the fact that Dwight, you, you know, we're talking about not killing everybody, but Dwight killed when it was necessary, so Dwight took out a few. But we got to get everybody from being um, too complacent to too eager to shoot. We got to get everybody that comfortable medium where there's like this this steady state. And Carl looks like he's going to be the person that is really going to start that mending process because later on in the Whisper War, all these people are going to have to come together. And there are saviors that aren't that bad, and there are saviors that are extreme. And there's Rick's group, um, 
there's some crazy people in Rick's group too, as much as we like them because we kind of grew with them, right? So I think that was, um, that's a little bit of my reaction. It didn't, um, it hasn't bummed me out yet. I think it's going to be a little bit uh, sad on February 25th, but I didn't walk away from it like feeling devastated because I think that there's a purpose to it. If it was completely pointless, like um, I thought Glenn's death was completely pointless, to be honest with you, and that bothered me more so. But I think um, Carl's got a little bit more story in that next episode. Um, Lindsay wants to know what will happen with Enid and Aaron. I think Enid's going to be, I think she's going to be given a pass. I, I think that woman needed to go, to be honest with you. And, uh, I think she'll be given a little bit of a pass and they'll let him go and then, uh, Cindy will go with him. Yeah, I mean, you know, being attached to a character, and, and I'm just I'm going to be as real as I can with you guys, I'm going to try to lessen the blow and soften the blow as much as I possibly can. I mean, that's why we get together and talk about it. But having a favorite character and that character leaving, or having a character you're attached to, um, I'm not going to be able to undo that. I can probably rationalize a little bit, which is what I try to do. Um, and I know we've done this in some of our reaction videos and some of our therapy videos. But, you know, that's really, I think, what you, you have to, um, you've got to look for the purpose of it. And I think that, that helps. Um, the fact that um, I didn't, what was the dude's name that got shot in the back of uh, Neil? When Neil got shot in the back of the car, I initially thought it was Jesus. And I'm, I'm actually on edge because... It's like, oh my gosh, they're going to kill Jerry, they're going to kill Jerry. Nope, they didn't kill Jerry. And Neil dies, and then you know at that moment, Maggie's changed. Maggie is, is now becoming ruthless Maggie. I mean, just executed uh, Dean right there in front of everybody to make a point saying, I'm the boss now, I'm in charge, this is the way we're going to do it. Let's send that message out there. So Hilltop still has a chance. And then you see Kingdom, and then the first thing you're thinking is, Oh, man, they're going to kill Ezekiel. And they still might. But Ezekiel pulled up in the bus, tried to find a way to get people out of there. So now Ezekiel's got a purpose again. And so it did kind of shift back and forth a little bit. But also keep in mind what Carl was able to do. And we saw that. I mean, you guys had to know from the first five minutes of the episode, oh, boy, there's a lot of Carl. There's a lot of Carl time here. So the writing was kind of on the wall at some point how it was going to go down. And the fact that it was a walker bite and it wasn't Negan killing him. And, and the fact that Negan does have a emotional connection to Carl. I think it very well... Look, they're still going to be heated. Negan's still going to want Rick dead. Rick's still going to... But at some point... I do think if if they don't work it out, Carl's death and Carl's wishes were in vain. So hopefully you can take a little bit of that perspective. And somebody was talking about, and I, th I think they had it backwards. Um, I don't, maybe, well, maybe it was Angela where she said, or maybe she meant to say it this way, if Carl wrote a note for Rick, I think that note is going to be the opposite and Carl's going to say, do not kill Negan. Not kill Negan. You know, finish this. I think it's going to be, have mercy. And find a way. It's, it's so easy for Rick to have that vengeance and to kill. And the hardest thing that Rick could ever do. Because try to sell this one. You're Rick Grimes. And your son says, the bigger picture here, don't make me die for nothing, is to find a way to lead all of these people, and you got Daryl, who wants everybody dead, and you got Tara, who wants everybody dead, now think about Rick's challenges. Rick's challenge is, is twice as hard at this point. Um, 
Shanny D says Maggie should have killed Jared. Um, Dean's the one that they know tried to kill um, Jesus. So I think it was also to uh, really nail the point home with Jesus that we're not playing any longer and you need to get on board. They need Jesus to uh, not just turn the other cheek. So we're going to read a couple more comments here. And a couple things. One, we've got a ton of people here, a lot of new people. Uh, everybody has their opinions. One, if the new people here, if you guys could do me a favor, subscribe. We'd like to have you guys back tomorrow night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. Also, about four or 500 people here. If you guys can slap the like button, be part of the 999 Army, get this thing up to 300 likes as quick as possible. And then my third request is, um, I see a lot of you guys responding to each other's comments. The only thing that I ask is be respectful. Um, you do, you know, there's a little bit of leniency. We're all adults here, but at the same time, you have to think before you type something rude. Sometimes you say it and it comes out, but to actually type it and to be an asshat about it, then, you know, that's kind of like double whammy. Just don't, you know, this is a group of people who's been together. We discuss a lot of stuff, so we'd love to have some of you new people as part of it, but we'd also, it comes with a stipulation of it, get your point across in a polite manner. You know, it's not a, a shouting match or an arguing match or, you know, who's going to be more right than the other person. We sort of work through this stuff. So uh, there you go. That's the only rules. Not too many. There are rules. Judith was in the tunnel. Absolutely. So Judith is safe. So we can finally take out the... Uh, the Judith gets her uh, prison death. The other thing is, Michonne really concerns me at this point. I have to be honest. Is I do think she's going to take the death of Carl harder than everybody else. But also, I don't know if you caught that at the end where... Daryl seems to be a little bit more forgiving of Dwight. So we could still have the Terra pirate theory that we came up with. You know, it was, it was first, let me, let me clarify that too, because you guys have watched for a long time. The first pirate theory we put out there was the Terra pirate theory. And then when Carl met Sadiq, we transitioned it, or at least I transitioned to the Carl pirate theory. But that still could play itself out because Terra does want to kill Dwight. Daryl seems to be warming up to him a little bit. So if Daryl goes back on that and Tara doesn't like the fact that Rick might spare Negan, I could see Tara hitting the road. So I'll leave that open. I'm, I'm telling you, somebody is still going to become a pirate. Somebody's leaving. Um, you know what? I don't know at this point whether... If, if anybody's even going to take Carl's comic arc, I think that the show made a clear point tonight that they will go in any direction that they need to. Um, I don't know, Westwick. I, you know, I see that com he made the comment that Michonne will leave, and Michonne did leave in the comics. If Carl's will is not to kill Negan, I don't see Michonne leaving. I think she would stand beside Rick and honor whatever Carl wanted to do. Tara might be a little bit different. And then we got to find out who's flying a helicopter. So Alicia says, when do you think Carl got bit? Um... I think he got bit in episode number one when he was walking around those cars. Um, like I said, I'm going to go back and watch that. Um, the first thing that popped in my mind was when he was helping Sadiq. But then Gimple just said that um, that was not the case. 
So I'm going to go back when, you know, when he was looking under the car and doing all of that because they said it was pretty obvious. I'm going to go back and watch episode number one and see if I missed it. I do feel like it was somewhere in episode number one, and I just wasn't paying too much attention to it because right, in tonight's episode, they showed what happened right after that of Rick and Carl walking side by side. And I'm pretty sure Carl was already bit at that point because that's when he started having his clarity. It was sort of sinking in that um, that they needed to start to, to work their way through it. I, Michael, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't have a timer of how long it's, uh, the first episode to now is not literally two months. I mean, there's only a couple of days that have transpired with this. So it's a fair point of when he would turn, but he hasn't turned. So he, he knows he's sick. He knows it's going to happen. Don't know why it's going to take Carl longer to turn. I mean, I don't think everything in the writing is flawless. I'm just going based on what what was said tonight and what might have happened. So, there you go. I mean, could somebody get bitten and live for a day or two? Yeah, I'm sure. Maybe depending on where they're bit, what their white blood cell count is. How much cauliflower they eat? I, you know, I don't know. We're just speculating at that point. It, it was the episode was very, um, it was pins and needles though. So I mean, we talked about that all week because you didn't know at some point. It's like, oh my God, Jerry's going to die. Nope, Jerry's not going to. Oh, they're going to kill Ezekiel. Nope, Ezekiel's not. So there were some close calls. I thought they were going to throw Maggie in that box. I really did. I will, because, look, some people are just coming at this in a lot of different directions. I will go back and watch episode number one and see if I see a moment. Um, all I know is on Talking Dead tonight, Gimple said that when it happened, we thought people knew because of Chandler's reaction. So he said if you go back and watch the episode. So I'm going to go back and watch episode one and see if we can pin down the exact moment. Um, clearly it wasn't obvious when it happened to everybody. So we need to go back and uh, figure it out. It's when you get a room this big and this many people, we all have our favorites and we all have our theories. And that's what makes it so fun and that's what makes it so unique. And Carl is not immune. It is a one-way ticket. You can but I guarantee you, tomorrow YouTube will be on fire with uh, conspiracy theories about whether or not Carl's really going to live. Um, so DX Gerald says, I thought when Carl said it's his show that he would be okay. Well, you know, it's the opposite. When Carl said it was his show... That means that this is it. I'm going out. This is the way I'm going out, and you guys need to do what I say. And he did. It was typical Carl. I mean, he stood up there, made the speech, threw the little smoke bombs, protected everybody. I mean, his goal was to save everybody. Lindsay Luke says, Kills, do you think Negan will grieve over Carl's death? I think people grieve in different ways, but as we touched on just a little bit ago, I think Carl's death is the... The central point of of the mending process. Carl's death will be the reason that Rick and Negan don't kill each other. I feel very comfortable with that. Yeah. 
I, you know, I know. Twitter's, you're going to, people are going to say we're going to quit watching the show and two episodes from now, they'll be watching the show. I can relate. I mean, you know, here's the thing. I see people that are, they're upset over Carl and Carl is their favorite character. Well, Abraham was mine. And when Abraham took that death and he sacrificed himself for the group, I'm okay with that. I was, I was still able to like Abraham from what I watched and I was able to move on and appreciate the show going forward. What I didn't like is I didn't like the Glenn death, but I still watched the show. So when you see in February 25th what Carl has brought and his overall meaning to it, if you're a fan of Carl, you're still going to watch the show and you're going to like the way that they let him die. It's just... All the characters cannot live forever. As, as blunt and as sad as that sounds, we'll, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a fire there. There's some revenge. A lot of people did stop watching it, but you know, at some point they're going to stop watching the show anyway, Lindsay. I mean, you, we can play devil's advocate over it. Next year after Game of Thrones, people are going to stop watching Game of Thrones because the show is going to be over. And it's no different with The Walking Dead. It is a zombie apocalypse, and, and it's a violent group of humans that are trying to kill each other. Characters are going to die. And you could there's a hundred ways that Carl could have died. And I, I honestly, I appreciate the writing, and I think... I think this is appropriate. I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm at peace with the way that Carl's going to go out. And there's going to be more. So, we'll get to a couple extra comments here. And we're, we're going to wind this down in about two or three more minutes. I'm going to get a few more people's comments. And just let people kind of react to it. And, of course, they're going to tweet about it. But we'll do, uh, you know, we'll do the best that we can. Uh, let's see. Um... Jason Kapola says, Daryl will become a pirate because he's going to be sad the fact that he screwed up Rick's plan. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know if Daryl's going to be blamed for it. I think that was just so, there's so many more important things to deal with at this point. And even Rosita said, you know, maybe it was a mistake, maybe it wasn't a mistake, I made a mistake. It happened, and people understand what Daryl's point was. He was trying to win the war. Um... Rick's kind of the de facto leader, but Daryl definitely is well within his right to try to do something. Let's, um, I, I don't think that'll be a storyline for the second half of the season. Uh, Jerry Michelle, Rick has to kill Negan. He told him he would, and he's always kept his word in episode number one. Carl, um, Jerry, I appreciate that. Let me, um, let me ask the group here with a super chat because you guys, here's the rules of super chat. Anybody makes a super chat donation, we stop whatever topic we're on and we address that. So I'm going to ask the group 400 people in this room, does Rick kill Negan? Yes or no? Let's see. Let's see the 999 Army official survey. Will Rick kill Negan? And I'm going to, once I see a few of these, I'm going to chime in once again and give my two cents. We got some no's, we got some yeses, so it's about 50 50. I got a feeling we get a lot more no's than yeses. Um, we got a few. Seventy-five, eighty percent, I would say. Say no. And Salem Blue hit the point on the head. Carl will ask him not to. So I, I agree with that. Um, if you guys remember the stream we did earlier this week, and, and maybe even the one we did two weeks ago, is we talked about the writing and how this had to go down when the rumors were out there that Carl could die or Negan could kill Carl. And... I went on record of saying, if Negan killed Carl, there's no way that Rick 
would not kill Negan. And if he did, it would be bad writing. And most people agreed with that. So if Carl's going to die and Carl asked Rick not to kill Negan, I don't think Rick's promise to Negan, I'm going to kill you. Not today. Not tomorrow. But I'm going to kill you. Right? He's going to go back on his word. Because what is more important? Killing Negan or honoring the last wishes of your dead son? So I want you guys to think about that. Those that said yes. Now it's not verified yet that that's what Carl's going to say. But Carl did already start telling him that when they were walking, tonight's episode, when they were walking side by side, I mean, Rick said, you think we're going to pick strawberries with Negan? And Carl is saying, we got to find a way to do this. You're going to live, but find a way to do it. But as we stated a little bit ago, that's not going to be a popular opinion, and it's going to make Rick's job more difficult as a leader because there's people that, that don't care what Carl said. They want Negan dead. And then you've got issue number two. Rick said he was going to kill Negan, but Daryl also said, what about Dwight? It's all over. I'm going to kill a son bitch. Right? Now, if Daryl doesn't kill Dwight, which he doesn't look like he's going to kill Dwight... I mean, tonight, he had a chance to kill him. He walked away. It's the second time. And then when they were in the tunnel, in the sewer, and Dwight said, you guys have to do this, Daryl said, we have to do this. To me, that's a big statement. That's a, that's a big um, olive branch. Doesn't mean Tara's going to like it, and it doesn't mean Tara's going to agree with it. All right, everybody, we have ran this up to over 30 minutes. Um, this is just kind of our raw reaction video. I know emotions are still running high, and we can't completely go over the therapy and change everybody's impression. Carl will be missed. There's no doubt about it. But you have to look at the storyline. You have to look at twofold. One, threefold. Let's be real for a minute. One, Chandler has some other things to do. And in real life, He's probably okay with that. So that you should take comfort in that. Number two, take comfort in times are changing. That the comic book is not the complete script any longer. That they are mixing it up a little bit. And number three, and probably the biggest thing, take comfort in the fact that Carl's death will not be in vain. And they even said it tonight. Carl's got more story to tell before he dies in the next episode and I think that's where it's going to be like, okay, cool. We're losing him, but he's changing the story forever. So that's what I want to throw out there. Think about it. Tomorrow night we'll be here, Monday night, 930. Bring your ideas. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier to deal with tomorrow. We'll have some more theories. We'll have some more predictions. We're going to start working on the second half of the season. I appreciate all of you for being here. If you guys could do me a favor, once again, slap that like button before you leave. Number two, this video will be live in about five minutes. Get over there. Leave some of your comments. Leave some of your questions. Leave some of your thoughts. Um, we can't do therapy all night. If uh, you guys follow me on Kick, send me a message, K-I-L-Z-H-O-T, if you just want to say, Kills, I don't agree with this theory, or kills is what I think is going to happen. And then I'll give you a shout-out in one of the future videos as well. So um, I'm going to try to do a few shout-outs at the end of this one. I know there's four or 500 people that have been in this chat. I won't get everybody, but if you guys could type a 999 in chat, if you guys are watching the playback, this is the closing credits. You're free to log out. You can go ahead and take off. I will talk to you all at 930 tomorrow. If you want to stick around for just uh, 30, 40, 50 seconds, type 999 in chat. I'll try to do as many shout-outs as I possibly can. And I'm going to miss a lot of people. Sorry. So I want to say what's up to 20,000 views. Also to Hippo. And some of you new people that are here, hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 70,000 subscribers. We're like 200 away. We should be there by Wednesday. We're going to do a big celebration on YouTube for that as well, too. Emma McKaylick, thanks for being here. Sinister Bullet, appreciate you being here. Jesse Lemon, Angus Johnson, Salem Blue, Brian Rooker, see you in the house. Uh, Winnell, good to see you. All my moderators, thank you for being here. You guys are amazing. Best moderators in any YouTube channel. 
and we're going to keep building these live streams. This is the difference between hopefully the 999 Army and other channels is we want to bring everybody here and make it really about your ideas and your thoughts. Vengeance 91, I see you in the house. Also Fiji, Nikki S, Landon England, uh, Sheldon Arthur, thanks for being here. Mama Bit, Said, Christopher Mickelson, Devin McNamara, Jennifer Ashley, Maggie Bonacorda, thank you so much. Hopefully this helped a little bit. Denise Panna, thanks for being here. Blood Eagle, Bethany Castillo, Dennis Panna, Ethan Dietrich, good to see you. Lindsay Elliott, Lindsay Luke, thanks for being here. Aragorn, Aragorn. Devilish, what's up, Devilish? Missy Ann, thanks for being here, Missy. Gamer Freak, Valar, Angela Sandoval, thanks, Dark Angel, appreciate you being here. Carrie S. Rockbound Man, Salem Blue, appreciate you being here. Westwick 88, my man from Detroit, what's up? Jacob Howard, thanks for being here. Green 74, Epic Vids 8. What's up, Halo Gray? Good to see you. Brian Wynn. Robert Mercer, Angela McMillan. You guys are awesome. Appreciate all you guys staying up late tonight, too, no doubt. Jason Coppola, thanks for being here. Kara Wilson. The Ocelli Effect, Katie C. Thanks so much, Katie. Appreciate you being here. Twister, hi, Def. What's up, man? Haiti, thanks for being here, Haiti. Thank you, Mandy. Appreciate you being here. Oh, Negan's here. That's trouble, man. Jerry and Michelle, thank you so much. Uh, for being here and also for the Super Chat donations. Uh, appreciate this week. There's been a lot of Super Chat donations to this channel. I just want to give a special shout out to all, not just that. I mean, one, thank you for that and, and getting your thoughts, getting your um, concepts out there. But also, just for all of you guys making time, many of you have been here every single night. And believe me, I never take that for granted. Uh, love doing the show for you guys every night. And hopefully we'll keep this thing going. We definitely will all next week. And then, we might wind down a little bit so people can enjoy the holidays. Thank you so much, everybody. If I missed you in a shout-out, leave it in the comments once this video goes live, and I'll try to catch you in the next video. I will talk to you tomorrow night at 9.30. Peace.